pirate, but I can tell you that for stranded sailors, this was once a treasure chest. However, it wasn't filled with gold, it was filled with biscuits. Sailors lost at sea on their way to and from England were often shipwrecked on New Zealand shores. This box held life-saving loot for castaways from 130 years ago. Well, yes, there were quite a few shipwrecks at the time. Of course, this is the age of sailing ships. And the route from Australia around towards Cape Horn back to Europe, the, the idea was to take advantage of the strong winds known as the Roaring Forties. There was a certain element of risk that a sailing ship, especially if, if the darkness descended or fogs or sea mist blew up, that they'd simply not be able to see an island or a rock ahead. And there's a number of ships, quite famous shipwrecks, basically smashed into the New Zealand sub-Antarctic island. It was a cold, uninviting welcome for shipwrecked sailors, like those from the ill-fated ship, the General Grant. Uh, that was a very famous shipwreck in 1866. It's a gruesome story. It's a very fa famous story, actually. The ship got trapped in a cave. A lot of people got drowned, but it were eventually rescued. And it was the General Grant rescue that, that led the initially the Southland Provincial Government and later on the New Zealand Government itself to set up a network of depots to, for castaway sailors. Each depot would have had a number of tins of basic food like this, tins of soup, biscuits, um, a stock of clothes, a stock of boots, a, some guns and ammunition for hunting seals, fishing lines, that sort of thing. Basic survival gear. These are probably anything up to 100 years old, this tin, which explains its condition, it's flaking away, and we basically don't want to open it up because it's so fragile, but essentially this is an unopened tin of crackers. Another item of survival gear from, from the same depot on the Antipodes Island, it's a man's three-piece suit. It's in a very distinctive pattern called a houndstooth check. It looks a bit loud to us today, but one of the risks that sailors ran was that they'd, come, they'd be survive and land on an island and found that somebody before them had broken into the depot and stolen the survival gear. So one of the reasons that these are in such a distinctive pattern is that anyone who stole them and wore them around the streets back in New Zealand or anywhere else would be instantly recognised. The government stopped servicing the depots around 1927 when radio communications improved and alternative shipping routes were opened. These supplies remained undisturbed for 20 years in the depot on the Antipodes Islands. The director of the Dominion Museum retrieved them in 1947. While you wouldn't make a fortune from this treasure, it was definitely worth its weight in gold for the castaways.